Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I'm an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are again. It is Monday, October the 12th, 2020, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 66. My name is Clyde J. Kill, and I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. I'm glad you two are joining me with uh, this episode. And um, the recommended videos, the subject, the theme for this this episode is uh, social media for artists, which is kind of like the uh, almost a no-brainer. If you're a working professional artist and you're not actively using social media, you are missing out on a major asset, a major asset to your career. And with social media... It's like never before has it been easier for artists to uh, reach out to the world and uh, have their art uh, presented and, uh, and and get some recognition, you know, for their work. But you have to know how to go about it. Uh, one of the videos we recommended uh, was a uh, from uh, it's called the, as they call themselves the Draftsman uh, podcast. But the gentleman uh, brought up some very interesting points that I had never heard before. Most of the so-called experts that uh, talk about uh, gaining followers on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and whatnot um, emphasize gaining followers, gaining likes. And this gentleman took a different approach and everything. And uh, Diane, do you know what I'm talking about? You want to uh, add your comments to that, what, uh, what he, his opinion is? Yeah. yeah, he was talking about how you don't want to have necessarily thousands or hundreds of thousands of followers if they're not the right people. And it's more important to have the right people, people that really want to follow you, that re- really like your work. It's more important to get those people than it is high numbers that maybe most of them don't really care about your work. So, you know, that's kind of what your focus should be. And you shouldn't worry about if they unsubscribe or, you know, drop off of your um, list because you don't really want the people that aren't into what you do. Yes. It changes your algorithms and everything when <laughs> you have a lot of. Absolutely. And that that's a big thing. It, it, <laughs> one of the things that uh, I also like that he presented before you jump on the social media, 
you have to decide what are you going to use it for. If you're going to use it to sell art, well, that's a big thing. You talk to all, you watch all these videos, other videos that they talk about selling your art on, you know, online through social media. So if you want to uh, sell your art, that takes a tremendous amount of work and obligation. Do you have the necessary uh, time? Do you have the necessary uh, motivation? Because in between your art practice of creating your art, then you have to spend a lot of time on social media. And if you're, it just, it takes a tremendous effort to uh, sell your art. Not that it can't be done. There are some artists that are doing it, but when afterwards, when you investigate how they go about it, they usually have a team. They have other people assisting them, you know, posting every day, three, four times a day and, and, and uh, creating different ki- types of content. Uh, you know, we, a, a, a fan of ours is uh, Gary Vanacek, you know, and that's what he talks about, you know, for any business, you got to, you know, be on, on social media all the time and, uh, posting all the time and don't worry about if it's uh, slick or whatever, just continue post, 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 post. But if you don't have a team to do that as a practicing solo artist, uh, it gets pretty difficult, right? Uh, right. Constance, why don't you add, add your opinions to that? Yeah, it does. I mean, and, uh, the, uh, it just it it takes up so much time, and then if you use all of the different types of social media, that's basically you're going to have to carve out a certain amount of time every day to spend with it, and then go back and carve out some time for painting or whatever it is that you do on this that you have this set up for, because like he said, it's like a rabbit hole. You can get, go down in the rabbit hole and not come back out for hours you know just on one one you know one one of them it's so that it's they have apps and stuff to help you post to did the, all of them when you post to one and then um but still you have to spend time designing that content to put it up Absolutely. you know and then so i try to post on Instagram once a day. Now, I don't always do it, but I try to, even if I'm reposting old photographs or arts pieces of artwork, you know, so. Um, Diane, what about you? How are, how are you up on social media? <laughs> I post whenever I get a chance, <laughs> and I don't worry yeah. about it too much. But, yeah. I mean, I know I should probably, I, I would have better results if I did it on a regular basis more often. But I just can't fit it into my schedule. So, yeah, um, you just you know, can't get all stressed out about it either. Right I mean, it. <laughs> you just have to do what you can do and not worry about the rest of it. You know, and that—that's the important thing. He—he uh, he also discussed about that. He said, "Don't beat yourself up," you know, because uh, he said, "There's there's the uh, the algorithm that is actually uh, it works against you sometimes." You know, because uh, if you like on Facebook, if you uh, uh, comment or like a certain certain types of postings. Well, then only those postings are presented to you. So whenever you post on Facebook, uh, if uh, the other folks are doing the same, your post may not even be seen by everybody. You know, and you so uh, you know if you put a picture up and a photograph up of your artwork and you get three likes and then you, the next day you post it and you get zero likes. Don't take it personal. That's not you. That's the, uh, that, that's the system that is, uh, you know, working, working against you. So, um, um, uh, it was a very interesting comment, uh, uh commentary that you- involved in it. And, and figure out the schedule and figure out when your followers are most likely on, you know, online and the best times to post things and the best days to post things. You can figure all that out from what the information they tell you. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I always have the time to do that 
at that time and that, you know, that day. And, I mean, I have used scheduler-type things, but uh, they say that when you use the third-party apps to do that, that the, they don't like that, so they, they lower your, you know, the, your uh, views and stuff. So it's kind of a toss-up what really works and what doesn't, and they change it all the time. So yeah. unless you have time to just keep up on it all the time, it's it's it can be a, yeah. yeah like a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, can spend all your days. Like That's a- one thing about social media. If you don't like the way it is right now in a month, it's going to be different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's true. Yep. <laughs> I uh, I had a good example of that just uh, the other day. Uh, I've this project that I'm working on, I'm attempting to slow myself down in my uh, painting is to uh, uh, paint a, in a, uh, with the glazing technique of the old, old masters, which oil painting, which uh, is very cumbersome and takes a long time. You have to paint, glaze a layer, and then let it dry completely. And then before you can glaze it, glaze the other layer. And, you know, it could take, uh, five, six hours you know, in between. So I took a photograph of it, of the first two images, the in, initial, uh, you know, uh, the initial composition, and then the uh, first la- glaze air- area. And I posted it because I have my, my profile page, personal page, and then I have a artist page on Facebook. I posted it on my artist page, and then I shared it to my personal page. Well, after nine or 10 hours, I didn't get any comments. I didn't get any likes. And I've got a about 300 some followers on, on both of those between those two pages, 301 and about 290 some on the other. And just about always I get a comment or a like or something and I got nothing. I said, okay, What's going on now on the, on the artist page? Yeah, there was some, you know, likes and cause those are, those are different. You know, they're not all, they're supposed to be the same, but they're not, but they actually, I find out they're different. They're different people. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so then I went and I posted and uh, like, it was in the early in the morning when I discovered this. So around, I don't know, I think it was like four o'clock in the morning. I posted, posted it on my uh, personal page. And I only got one like. And I thought, okay, that's abnormal because I usually get more than that. So then I posted it again <laughs> around 5 o'clock. And bingo. Comments, all kinds of comments. And everything. So it was the actual the Facebook algorithm that was working against me. It was working again, And so... Uh, when I share something from my uh, uh, artist page to my personal page, for some reason, Facebook doesn't push that up. You know, so I never had paid attention to that before until, you know, after I, you know, I'd watched this gentleman's video and, and learned about some of the stuff he had talked about. And so it kind of, it, it was in my mind. It, it stuck in my mind. Said, yeah, that is what is going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With Instagram, I also did a little bit of an experiment. When he was talking about on Instagram, you know, he said, uh, if you know, if you if you run up to a lot of uh, followers and then you people start dropping off, he said, don't worry about it. Well, actually, I've had a very consistent numbers of followers for the last year I've gone up to like a thousand two hundred and eight two hundred and nine and they've stayed there they just maybe drop one one or two but then I'd get one or two back and just so you know I, I started looking through that and I said okay those those are people and those people would always would would always comment on my art or like or or whatever, but I wouldn't post on face. I was post on Instagram every day. You know, they recommend two or three times a day. I would post one, and then maybe three days, four days, maybe a week later, post something. So, I, but they still they still stayed. So that told me, okay, those people like my art. So then I went through, but I couldn't if if I wanted to uh, gain. Like if I wanted to follow somebody, 
Instagram wouldn't let me because they have a limit on the amount of people you can follow. And I, I think mine was up to like, I was up to like 7,000 something or whatever, you know, I was following. So I have been going back and cleaning my Instagram account, going back and of the people that are not following me unfollowing them. And a lot of the other garbage, uh, quite a few of what I call honeys. There were quite a few of those. I thought I had to eliminate a bunch of, but I still had a bunch of them. So I was eliminating those and, and, and kind of like, uh, uh, pruning, pruning the branches as I to use a tree analogy, pruning it down. And that has worked. I'm now up to, I think I last checked like a uh, 1,214 something, you know, I said, wow. <laughs> and the more the and comments because I posted images of this project that I'm working on and so I'll be able to work post a work in progress yeah which leads me to our next video the recommendation is Sergio Gomez Sergio always has nice things to say and I knew about this video about a week ago when it came out because Constance had mentioned it on her Facebook page about about him so that's why I knew I I made a note to myself, so we're going to use that in a future podcast. You know? Yeah, I thought it was a very good, a very good. Uh, yeah, 20 Instagram ideals. Mm -hmm. okay. And so I've actually, part of this Instagram stuff that I've been doing was, was prompted by uh, Sergio's recommendations. And some of, this, some of his ideas are very easy to implement. You know, he says, don't be afraid to, to post work in progress photos, you know, and, and, different ways is that you know either uh, you're showing your hands or uh uh standing in front of your work or so, you know or i was really surprised at how much how much uh because when i was doing the strata easel challenge i was posting something every day that try i tried to finish something but sometimes you get in a time crunch and you get so far and but they, they allowed you to start a painting one day and finish it the next day and post that, you know. But um, where was I going with that? <laughs> but anyway, uh, the work in progress, I was really surprised at how many people like to see the work in progress, like the grisaille that you, you know, that you do on your panel before you start painting. Uh, and people like to see that process you know so yeah i i i i've 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 thought why would anybody be interested in that but i guess the, the they are artists uh, even maybe even other artists maybe there's new artists young artists artists who are trying to improve their skill too they uh, yeah may look at that mm -hmm. so, so i uh uh that and le this leads up to um um you know last week we kind of set our goals and let me tell you something. Okay, I've been, you know, because my oil oil paints was getting kind of low, and I wanted to save them in case, in case I had to do this future project. And I had plenty of acrylics, you know, and so I've been doing watercolors. Well, I was trying to, I was, I had, I could not believe it. I started two different watercolor projects, and each one I ripped it up before because I just could not get it. I could not reach that point of satisfaction so to distract myself and i was frustrated i went to youtube and said i'll watch a couple art videos and i saw an art video talking about oil glazing now i've always been interested in glazing because i use a bit of a glazing technique with watercolors you know and what glazing is folks difference between glazing and a wash Glazing is where you use a medium. In the case of watercolors, it's it's either it's uh, water. You use more pigment, pigment with uh, or a little bit of pigment with your water, more water with your pigment. In the case of oil paint, it's an oil medium. Uh, you use more of that than you do pigment, and and you lay down a thin layer, and when that dries, then you lay down a layer on top. And this was a technique that uh, the old masters used because uh, they had a limited number of colors and they also had, didn't have that much paint. Paint was very, very extremely expensive, expensive, but what it does for you, the ending result based upon how many layers you take it up to, you can really, uh, really uh, add luminosity and makes your colors really vibrant. 
So I've always been interested in doing that, but the way I create art never lend itself to doing effective uh, that that technique because that technique you have to have patience and it takes a long time to complete a piece of work. And I'm not patient. Uh, I will start on a project if it takes me two hours, then I'll finish it in two hours. If it takes me seven hours, I will do it in one sitting until it's done. That's why I like in the oil pan. Oil premium. I like oil premium because it gave that, you know. But I've been wanting to do this glazing technique. So out of frustration and the fact I didn't have, I noticed it didn't take that much paint, you know, to do it. So I started this project. And that's what I've been pay, posting for the uh, uh, the work in progress. And uh, it's interesting. Uh, I ha- I find myself frequently getting up and touching the paint to see if it's dry yet. And when it's not dry, going, ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> when he, start another painting. <laughs> well, that's, that's what I got to think. I might start. Yeah. It, yeah. And I may end up having maybe two or three, maybe four projects going on the same. I don't know if I, if I could do that, but. It, it's a process. I mean, it's a, you know, you can do some Alaprema ones, but then maybe have, a couple you're doing that you're have them in a process doing the process of glazing and stuff so that you're not all hung up on oh i can't do an alaprema you know fin- i want to finish results now you can always do more of those you know and then but then also have the ones well, that the, uh, working on on the side also the other video because i you know i like acrylics but the thing with acrylics is you don't get that uh that same uh, brilliance or luminosity that you get with, with oils. Well, I saw some videos, which was really, really interesting. Uh, you can uh, basically do the the preliminary works all in acrylics with your colors and everything, but then start glazing with the oils on top. You can't do the reverse. You know, you can't go. Right. You know, because it would be horrible because the, the acrylics just won't stick to oil. <laughs> But once you decide to go to oil, you got to stick with oil. And that's what I am this current project. That's what I'm working on is for this first one. It's coming out really great. Um, hopefully when we get done, I got to check it, but it might be drying it for our bill to apply the fourth layer. <laughs> Which is that get some liquid or something to help the speed the drying process. Well, I'm, I'm using that uh, walnut oil alkyd. And as a medium and okay. that, you know, that so, help. Right. so usually about four or five hours it depends on the color some colors uh take uh, longer to dry than others but uh, yeah a lot of set overnight yeah but uh the, the like the whites all the whites for some reason uh i'm using a zinc white which is more of a transparent white it's still even with the alkyd mixed in it 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 still it it takes the longest to dry all the others are dry to touch you know the the, the reds and the blue. Yeah, the white is slow drying. Some of the cads are slow drying, thank goodness. We were, we were <laughs> you set them out on your palette, you know, they're so expensive. You set them out on your palette, you want them not to dry up. Yeah. <laughs> right. But we were talking about our goals. That, uh, so I said, what did I say, three or four paintings? Okay, I only got one done and I got one in progress. <laughs> what about you, too? What about you, Diane? Do you, you, you get your got the small ones finished and so i haven't i have 12 now i'm not sure about a couple of them i might redo or do other ones just to have some extras well, but i do have enough for a calendar and i did start a big painting it's a 24 by 30 i did start that one too uh-huh. so yeah yeah this one i'm working on is a, it's a i decided to go big it's it was really stupid the first time i'd done this technique and i and i decided to go 16 by 20 but I just, I'm one of these, I'm going to jump in. What the heck? <laughs> Sink or swim, you know? <laughs> what about you, Constance? Did you get your goals uh, completed? No, I didn't get all of I didn't do the video that I was supposed to do for advertising. Um, but I don't know what other goals I had made. All right. Well, speaking so of. I still need to do that. But I did get some painting, some painting done, but. I've had a couple of migraines this week, so it's kind of knocked me out of the water some. Yep. Well, speaking of, speaking of advertising, let's let's take a break here for uh, a message, and then we will be right back. Hey. 
Everyone needs to have a space that they feel relaxed and calm in. Hi, I'm artist Diane Hunt, and I create traditional, realistic oil paintings of nature. I'd love to help you bring the beauty of nature into your home or office. For podcast listeners, I am offering a $25 off coupon, good for the next two weeks. Go to www.dianehuntstudio.com. Use code PODCAST25. Let my paintings of nature help to renew your soul. Welcome back to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 66 for October the 12th, 2020. And my name is Clyde J. Kale, and I'm here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And for the last part of our podcast, we had a dear friend pass away Sunday, uh, Paul Klein of Klein Artist Works. And it's because of Paul Klein that uh, Diane and Constance that we're friends because we had enrolled in his mentorship program about three years ago. And uh, we're so enthused and impressed with each other, we decided to stay together. <laughs> we, 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 we would meet and basically almost imitate the Paul Klein method. And then uh, this last year, we decided, hey, these are so great, so many great conversations. Let's record these. So we started the, started the podcast recordings. But uh, Paul was – I am very grateful to Paul because he helped me launch my artist career. Um, I had the February in 2017, I had decided to try and go go professional, having not done any – been a created anything as a visual artist for 20 some years and then i just picked it up my daughters you know encouraged me and uh picked it up and then i had was searching on youtube about you know selling on, on online and marketing and and i came across a paul klein video of his discussions and i investigated his course and then that following September, I enrolled in that course. And, of course, then I, Diane was in our class, and I think Constance was in the following class. But then we uh, we, we were Paul, – Paul connected us, so Constance joined up with us. And one of the reasons that uh, he has a way of uh, motivating you and besides providing uh, uh, excellent – information and guidance in, in you know in establishing your career and helping you determine what direction you want to take your career uh he also uh had a way of just uh, motivating you and keeping and inspiring you and keeping you you know motivated and so we uh after a group of us after we completed the course we wanted to continue that because I myself knew that if I didn't stay in contact with these other artists, I would just, I probably wouldn't keep it up. And as a result, I met Diane online and then I met Constance and we had quite a few others and they've slowly dropped off. You know, I think we had what about seven of us, didn't we, Diane, originally seven or eight. Yeah. And we were meeting for (laughs) <laughs> we were losing them. Yeah, we, were, then, we were meeting uh, that first, <clears throat> almost that first year. They stayed with us uh, 2000, uh, most of 2018, and then they just kind of, 2019, they just kind of seemed to drop off, you know? And so, and. Well, life gets busy and things happen and mm-hmm. circumstances yeah. change. And <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all of the above. Yeah. But, um, uh, I just wanted to uh, express my uh, my my thankfulness, my gratefulness to uh, to Paul because all of my achievements uh, that I've achieved since completing his course have been due to Paul. They really have. Uh, he uh, motivated me, inspired me, and helped get, helped me get my head wrapped around this thing called an artist career. Diane, you you want to add? Yeah, I mean, he, he introduced us to a lot of um, other artists as well as curators and um, different uh, people that were, are in the art field. And um, he made you realize that there was lots of different avenues to take 
that, that you have I mean, a lot of options other than just the gallery system. And there was, um, you know, there's a lot much more to it than the, that's just that one avenue. Um, he talked about having art villages and, and, you know, getting to know other people and networking with other people. And, um, yeah, he, he, he was really good at that, like um, bringing people from other um, art, I don't know what you call them, I guess other, other art villages together and giving you the information that you could use to, to make those connections. And that was really um, something that I, I guess that's probably the biggest thing I got out of it, out of his classes. Constance, what, what did you get out, out of it? Yeah, um, for me, it was meeting up with you guys to have this weekly meeting to keep yourself motivated, which to me is just the best thing ever because when you live out in the middle of a prairie in the middle of nowhere, you don't have, you know, it takes you an hour to get to the nearest gallery just to even go in and look. So, yeah, having artist friends, us having our own little village that we have right here to keep ourselves motivated is a big, humongous plus. Also, you know, he used to steer us, you know, away from people who teach you about the scamming that people try to steal from you and what to look for. And and then also the co the contacts because a lot of the interviewers that we had people that we interviewed during the classes um they always gave the emails at the end of the class if they were gallery owners to so you could send in photographs if you wanted to be a part of their gallery you know or whatever they were doing you know so yeah yeah was, he uh, he was definitely a force in the in the art in the uh, art community, and I would, I would say the world art community, uh, especially in the in the Chicago area, because he lived up, he lived up there in Chicago, you know, in that area, you know, over you know over the years. But he actually was you know worldwide. Uh, his uh, his webinars, as he called them, you know, his interviews were all you know uh, working professional artists and uh working art curators and gallerists and art dealers and i mean all of the movers and shakers of the uh you know of the art world and in fact if you go to uh was it kleinartistworks.com i think it's his website uh kleinartistworks.com he has the he he he's he had been struggling with cancer for six years so this last year or so he knew that it was really coming to an end. And uh, actually, um, he had in, uh, in from January to uh, uh, March of 2018, after we had completed the course, he actually hired me, which really surprised me. And we did a project of uploading all of those videos, 300 some videos, upload them to YouTube so that later on he was going to make them available, which is what he's done this last year. He opened up, yeah. he made them all available on his site. So I feel very proud that he considered me for that project. And so now I've contributed to his legacy that, uh, so those videos are open to the public and he's got the entire uh, course that you could actually take up there that he's got the, uh, uh, we call it the, uh, the agenda, you know, of, of the course, you could follow along and take take the course that we paid for, but he's put it out to the to the world, which is, uh, yeah, I think is a, a definite tribute to uh, to Paul Klein. I'm thinking about uh, next next week's podcast. We're going to do a little. I didn't have time to prepare this week for this week, but next week we're going to do a bit of a memorial to uh, Paul Klein. Uh, I have some. Um, audio clips of conversations I had with him and he's had with other artists that we will include that into the, uh, into the podcast. And then we'll, uh, put some, uh, recommend, uh, some of the, uh, uh, maybe a couple of the, uh, webinar interviews and, uh, give you folks a chance to, uh, especially you artists who listen to the podcast, 
a chance to see what uh, what this gentleman was all about, and that uh, he'll be uh, he'll be sorely missed. So uh, please, you know, rest in peace. Uh, I used to call him the uh, El Maestro. Re- you know, rest in peace, Maestro. Okay, well, I think with that we will uh, end this episode. We'll wrap this episode up. For the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 66 for October the 12th, 2020. And I will say goodbye to Diane and Constance, and I'll let Constance say goodbye to everybody. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. And Diane? (laughs) Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, folks. And thank you so much for listening. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.edsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at signmystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.